Hello everybody and welcome to my full iPad lesson for beginners and seniors in 2021. So this full iPad tutorial will cover all of the basics of using an iPad, including the buttons and charging on your iPad, the setup process on your iPad, the lock screen, home screen, different apps, how to do basic things on your iPad, and I am confident that at the end of this iPad course, you will not only know the basics, but you will be proficient at using your iPad. Anyways, this video is a little bit long, so make sure to find somewhere comfortable to sit and follow along with your iPad with what I do in the video so that you can learn it. Now, if I am talking a little bit too fast and you'd like to slow down the video, that's really easy to do. All you need to do is tap the gear icon at the bottom of the YouTube page, and you can change the speed right there. Or if you can't hear me very well, then don't worry, I have added closed caption to this video. So just tap the little CC at the bottom of the YouTube player window to enable closed captioning. Anyway, let's begin. So here is an iPad. This is a basic iPad. It looks like the iPad 8th generation or the iPad 7th generation or most iPads. They haven't changed the design in several years. So on the back, of course, we have a camera right here. On the sides, we have our volume up and volume down button. On the top, we have a power button and a headphone jack. On the bottom, we have a lightning port for charging and data transfer, as well as our speakers. On the front, we have our large iPad screen, a front facing camera right there. And we have our home button slash fingerprint sensor. Now, these may be laid out slightly differently on a different model of iPad. For example, on the iPad Pro, we have our Face ID sensor on the front, and we have our USB-C port on the bottom, speakers on the bottom and on the top, camera and flash on the back, and some other things like the smart connector. And if you have an iPad Air that's the 2020 model, then on your power button, this is actually your fingerprint sensor as well. But other than that, most things about your iPad are pretty much the same, uh, except a couple of few changes with the controls. Anyways, the first thing I highly recommend you do when you get your iPad is install a screen protector and a case. So as you can see, I have a little glass screen protector on here, which is literally a piece of glass. You can hardly notice it. They cost like five bucks on Amazon. And if you drop your iPad face flat, then there's actually a high chance that your glass screen protector will crack, but your iPad screen will be fine. Not 100% chance, sometimes your iPad will break as well, but oftentimes as a glass screen protector can protect your iPad from shattering. Next thing I recommend you getting is an iPad case. Now these are really good for just carrying around your iPad, protecting it from you know bending because it's a little bit rigid and it just offers some additional screen protection as well. As you can see, it covers the screen. And another cool thing about these cases, which is actually if I stick my iPad in the case, then certain cases can hold up my iPad. Anyways, another really important thing you guys will need to know is how to charge your iPad. So depending on which iPad model you'll have, you'll have a slightly different looking charger, but in general, it works the same. You have a cable with Two ends, one end that plugs into your iPad, which for the basic iPads, it's a lightning cable. And then you have a USB or a USB-C on the other end, which will look like this, or it might be a little bit smaller. And then you'll have some kind of adapter that your cable will plug into, and then it will plug into the wall. So that's just how you charge your iPad. Anyways, let's get right into how to set up your iPad. So when you first turn it on, you'll be greeted with this hello screen. You're going to want to click the home button to open, or if you're on an iPad Air or an iPad without a home button, then you're just going to want to slide up from the bottom. Anyways, so let's just open up our iPad and it will first ask us which language we want. So I'm going to tap English, but there is a lot of choices. If you don't speak English as your primary language, don't worry about that. Now we'll ask you to select your country or region. So for me, I'm going to select United States. And now you'll see this quick start menu. Now you can ignore this unless you already know what you're doing. I'm not going to show how this works because 
it's kind of complicated and a little bit of a waste of time unless you can do this. So for most users, you're just going to want to click set up manually. Now you'll choose your Wi-Fi network, or if you don't have Wi-Fi, you'll need to connect it to your computer. But for me, I'm going to select my Wi-Fi network, which is Otis, and I'm going to enter my Wi-Fi password. Now I'm joining my Wi-Fi network right now. And as you can see, it's activating my iPad. Now, as you can see, I have this new data and privacy screen, which just gives you some information about how Apple collects your data because Apple really cares about your privacy, unlike some other companies. Well, I don't know if they really care or if it's just a, um, you know, a commercial thing. They're not perfect, but I'd say looking at some of the stuff they collect, they're way better than some of the other companies when it comes to privacy. But anyways, it's just letting you know a little bit about Apple's privacy. You can read that if you want to click learn more or just click continue to get past this. Now we'll ask you to set up touch ID, which you're going to want to click continue. And then you're just going to want to follow the on screen prompt. So for this, I'm just going to be lifting and resting my finger repeatedly on the home button. Don't click. Everyone clicks. As you can see, if you click, then click continue and then rest your finger on the home button again. But if you don't have a home button, of course, you'll either have face ID, which the setup is slightly different. It will guide you on how to set that up or it will want you to set up touch ID by resting your finger on the power button. But it's pretty clear on what you need to do. Just follow the on screen prompts. We're just going to want to keep on doing that. And then it will say adjust your grip. So I'll click continue and I'm just going to move my finger around so I can scan the edges of my finger so that when I want to unlock my iPad, it's really fast. So you can see if I'm not following the instructions too well, for example, if I just quickly tap it, it will tell me keep my finger on the home button until asked to lift. So I'm going to tap OK. But anyways, you're just going to want to keep on following the instructions. Then once you're done, it will tell you complete touch ID is ready. Now it will tell you create a passcode. So you have a few options. So touch ID is your fingerprint to unlock your device in most cases, but occasionally you will be required to enter your iPad passcode, which by default is going to be, you know, six characters. But if you tap this little passcode options, you can enter a custom alphanumeric code, which sounds complicated. It just means whatever you want, or you can have a six digit numeric code or a four digit numeric code. So for this case, I'm just going to enter likely the most secure passcode in the world. One, two, three, four. This passcode can be easily guessed. Oh, look, they're, um, they're even complimenting me on how secure my passcode is. So I'm just going to tap on it, use anyway. Honestly, guys, <laughs> choose a more secure passcode than one, two, three, four because people can access your data easily if they just guess that passcode and they will probably guess that passcode. Anyway, now you'll see this apps and data screen. So for this, we're just going to click don't transfer my apps and data. And then you'll get this Apple ID screen, which it will ask you to sign in with your Apple ID to use iCloud, App Store, etc. If you have an Apple ID, you probably know you have an Apple ID. If you have an iPad or an iPhone or another Apple device, you probably have an Apple ID. If you do, sign in. If not, then we're going to tap on forgot password or don't have an Apple ID. Then we're going to create a free Apple ID. Now it's going to ask for our first name. So I'm just going to say um, George. And then my last name is not my name. So birthday, I'm going to enter uh, probably, you know, one of the most important days in history as my birthday, which is definitely my birthday. I'm going to enter January 1st. Doesn't want January. So I'm just going to do April 30th. 1981 because that is how old I am 
If you want proof, just scroll down and you should see a little photograph of me next to my name on the YouTube page. You can tell that's, that's how old I am. Anyways, now you'll want to tap on next and it will ask you for your email address. If you don't want to give Apple your email, I don't blame you. Then just type don't have an email address, click get an iCloud email address, and then you're going to type in whatever email you want and Apple will make you one. So I'm just going to enter, it says enter your name at iCloud.com. So I'm just going to enter uh, my name, sure, at iCloud.com because they don't need my name. And now it's prompting me for Apple news and announcements with a little switch. So that just means, do you want Apple to bombard you with junk emails? So uh, tap on the next button. It's gonna ask you to create the email address. And now it's gonna ask for a passcode, which keep in mind, uh, Apple wants you to forget your passcode. So it's going to need to be at least eight characters in length. It's going to need to include a number, an uppercase letter, and a lowercase letter. So of course, I recommend you write this down. That way, you know, you don't forget your passcode. So I'm just going to enter very secure passcode again, passcode secure. And then one, two, three, and then an exclamation point that should meet all of Apple's requirements. Passcode secure. One, two, three exclamation points. So once you've entered your passcode twice right there, you just want to want to tap the next button. And now Apple wants your phone number so that, you know, if they're bored, Apple can call you up and have a conversation with you. But, um, so I'm going to give them my phone number right here, which you guys don't need to see. So I'm probably going to cut this, but once you've entered your phone number, just tap on next and they'll send you a little text message with a code that you need to enter on your iPad. So I got my code, which I'm entering right here. And then if you got it right, it will take you to this terms and conditions page. So I definitely recommend you read this because, you know, we don't know what Apple's lawyers are uh, asking you to agree to. You know, they could be asking for you to pay them 100 million dollars they could be you know asking you to sign away your house who knows what's in these terms and conditions nobody reads them i'm just going to tap agree and uh well i just made a binding contract that i don't know what's in the contract anyways so now it's going to take a few minutes for apple to create my apple id okay now it's going to give me this prompt for express settings so it's going to ask you you know essentially some settings about how apple collects your data so if you want to give Apple your data, just click continue. Otherwise, click customize settings. So for a lot of people, they don't want to give up their data to Apple. So click on customize settings, and then you click on continue. And then if you want to enable location services, that's going to allow maps and certain apps and services to gather your data. So I'm going to allow that because it's pretty useful for getting navigation directions and stuff like that. Once you do that, it will take you to the Apple Pay page. If you want to give up Apple your credit card so that you can pay for things easily with your iPad. Honestly, from what I've researched, it's actually really secure. I use Apple Pay on my own all the time and it's super handy. But for a lot of people, they aren't ready to do that. So I'm just going to click set up later in settings. Now we'll ask you to set up iCloud Keychain, which essentially allows your iPad to save your credit card and passcodes secure and encrypted and in a way that cannot be read by Apple. So this is really useful just if you forget your passcodes all the time, your iPad will remember it. So just click continue and it's going to take a little bit to load. Now I have Siri settings. So Siri is really useful. Siri is a little virtual assistant I can talk to in my iPad. So I'll tap on continue. Now it's going to ask me to say these things on the screen. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, send a message. Hey Siri, how's the weather today? Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Hey Siri, play some music. Now it says, hey Siri is ready. So if I say, hey Siri, and then tell Siri to 
do me a task, Siri will be obligated to do my bidding. So now I'll tap on continue. Now it's gonna ask you to share basically your audio recordings, which is like a recording of whatever you tell Siri with Apple for their research. I click not now because Siri activates by mistake all the time when I'm not talking to her. And <laughs> the last thing I need to happen is for me to be saying like, you know, so I was uh, calling this guy up on the phone and he asked for my social security number and I told him it's one, two, three, and then Siri records your social security number, sends it to Apple, and boom, you've got identity theft on your hand. Well, that's a joke. Anyway, screen time. So get a weekly report with insights about your screen time and set time limits for apps you want to manage. You can also use screen time on children's devices and set up parental controls. So screen time is essentially gonna tell you how long you use your iPad, so that after the end of the week, you can look in screen time and say, oh wow, I wasted 30 hours this week on Facebook. So you can just click continue. Now it's gonna ask you to look at your analytics, help Apple improve its products and services, including Siri and other intelligent features by allowing analytics of your data. So if you don't wanna share your data, just click don't share. If you wanna share it, you can share it. Now it's gonna ask if you want dark or light mode on your device. This is completely personal opinion and easily change it later. So I'm just gonna click light mode. Now it's gonna say, welcome to iPad and boom, you're done setting up your iPad. Look at this beautiful device. We're on the home screen. Right now we're gonna be discussing the lock screen. Now the lock screen is essentially when you turn on your device, you see this little screen right here and there's a few things you can do. So on the lock screen, if you slide from left to right, you can access the today view which is a bunch of widgets that have not yet loaded on my device, but they'll tell me stuff like the weather, my battery percentage, stocks, and um, you know, things like that. If I slide from right to left, I'll open up the camera where I have lots of options. You know, I can video, take photos, take a flattering photograph of myself, but we'll discuss all of that later. And in the top right corner, you can access some basic controls on your device by swiping down. Now to unlock your device, just click the home button and it will ask for either your passcode or your fingerprint. So I entered, of course, a extremely secure passcode when I set up this device that nobody will ever guess in my opinion. Anyways, now that I've done that, I'm on the home screen. So on the home screen, there's a few cool things that you should learn about. This thing right here is called the dock. It holds apps and when you scroll between pages, you still got the dock there. When you open up an application and you slide up from the bottom, you can see the dock right there to launch another application. These little square things are called applications, which are essentially a program on your iPad. You open them by tapping on them and you get out of them by sliding up or clicking the home button. And your iPad also, if you scroll all the way to the left, has access here to today view. And you have all these different widgets in here. And one really cool thing you can do is if you hold down on one of the widgets, you can tap on edit home screen and you can tap this little plus button in the top right left corner. And you can actually drag a widget out into right here and drop it. And it will add your widget into your today view for you to access cool things in there. And of course you can rearrange these widgets by holding down and just dragging them. And they'll kind of move around for you. When you're done, drop them and tap done. You can also move around your app icons by holding them and then dragging them around and you can drag between pages, of course, and different icons will move to get out of the way before you drop them. If you want to delete an app, then there's two things you can do. So if you have a useless app that you're never gonna use, like I'm never gonna use the podcast app because I don't listen to podcasts. I guess that's actually kind of a good app for some people, I just don't listen to podcasts. Tap this X button and tap delete. But, if you just want to have certain apps that you don't normally use, but you might use at some point, then take your apps, hold them, 
drag them onto each other, and you can form a folder right here, which you can actually rename this folder. So right now it's named productivity, but if you tap the name, I'll name it junk. And I'll drag it to the last page right here. Tips, uh, that's going to go in the junk folder. Uh, shortcuts, that's going to go in the junk folder. Then once you're done with that, you can just tap the done button and boom, you're done editing all of your apps. And you may be wondering, why is my iPad in this orientation? Well, if I want it to go from landscape to portrait, I just rotate it. It doesn't exactly fit in my camera frame, but it uses some sensors inside there to detect the rotation of your iPad and it will automatically change the orientation of your screen. Another cool thing you can do is if you want to change your wallpaper, then tap on the settings app and you want to tap on wallpaper right here. And you'll tap on choose a new wallpaper and Apple will give you some wallpapers automatically. You have dynamic and stills. So I'm going to tap on stills and we have all these cool wallpapers right here. So I personally love these desert photos. I think they're really great shots. So you can tap on one of them and it will give you the option to make this your iPad wallpaper. So once you have that, you can, of course, you know, click on this perspective zoom option, which will essentially perspective zoom when it's on. If you turn your iPad, it will kind of rotate the wallpaper to match whatever perspective that you're looking at your iPad. Or if you don't want that, it just doesn't move depending on how you rotate your iPad. But I like that on. So then you can click on set and you can either set your home screen, log screen, or both. So the log screen, as we talked about, is the screen that you get when you turn on your iPad. The home screen is the screen you get with all your app icons, or you can set both. So I'm going to do that. Set both. Now I have this beautiful wallpaper right here. Now, another important feature of the home screen that you should probably know is if you want to access recently opened applications, then just double tap on the home button or you can slide up from the bottom of your screen. And here you'll see the app switcher where you can open up different applications to see different things in all of those applications that you were on earlier. For example, if I was on a certain note in the notes application, then I can just tap on the notes application. Now let's discuss the notification center. So if you slide down from the top of your screen, you'll see little notifications right here which I have none right now, but I'm just going to give myself a notification. What's that? I got a notification right here. So as you can see, I have a notification right here and I can hold down on it to expand it. It's a text. I can reply easily from here or I can access other features in the app from right in here. If you want to clear it out, then what you'll need to do is slide down and tap on clear. Once you have no older notifications, you should see right here, no older notifications. And from the notification center also, remember you can easily access your uh, activity view and your camera right here. It kind of acts like the lock screen. Now let's discuss control center. So to access control center, slide down from the top right corner and you'll see these little controls right here. You have your volume, your brightness slider, do not disturb, which is essentially going to block your tech from making noises at night. Rotation lock, which prevents your device from automatically rotating. Airplane mode, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and all these other cool things that you have on your device. You can even tap on screen mirroring and then tap on your TV. And on certain TVs, your iPad will mirror a screen to the TV. So that is basically control center. It's a lot of little controls about your iPad that allow it to do certain things. Another cool thing you can do from here is if you hold down on one of these boxes, you can expand it and you can change something like dark mode. You can change dark mode or you can change all kinds of other things right from there. Now, if you want to copy some text, then just double tap on it or hold and drag these little sliders on it. And you can tap on copy. Then you can tap this little button right here on your keyboard to paste text. 
Another cool thing you can do is if you just tap with three fingers right on the text, you get this little menu with all these different options about how you can modify your text right here. If you want to take a screenshot on your iPad, then what you'll actually want to do is press on the power button and the home button, and it will take a screenshot of your current screen on your iPad, which you can tap on, and you can do things like editing the screenshot. So if you want to, for example, circle something, then you'll just draw a circle. And if you just hold on that circle, then it will correct it to make it, you know, a perfect circle. If you want to magnify things in that screenshot, tap on this plus button and tap magnifier. And here you can magnify things on your screenshot to make them appear bigger. You can, of course, crop it and you can send that screenshot to whoever you want to send it to. Or you can just tap the done button to save it. Now let's discuss a couple important things you can do in the settings app on your iPad. So if you open up the settings app, you'll see the first thing you'll see is right here, Wi-Fi airplane mode Bluetooth. So if you go to somebody's house and you wanna to connect to their internet, you'll need to tap on Wi-Fi and then tap on their Wi-Fi network to connect to their internet. Of course, it will ask you for their passcode. And once you type that in, you'll tap on the join button and you'll connect to their internet. Another important thing you should do is every few weeks, tap on the general tab in settings, tap on software update. And here you can check for an update on your iPad and you can download and install a software update on your iPad, which most of them are pretty good to keep your iPad up to date. Now, if you want to shut your device fully and also turn it back on, just hold down on the power button or if you're on an iPad that has no home button and can activate Siri with the power button, hold down on the power button and the volume button. But on this model, I don't need to hold the volume button. I'll just hold the power button and I'll see this slide to power off slider. So I'll drag it to turn off my device and to power back on. I can just hold the power button and my device should turn it right back on. So as long as you hold it, should show you the Apple logo and then it will boot up. It might take, you know, 30 seconds or so. Now, another thing that you should know that honestly, this is a myth that most iPad users and iPhone users think when you don't use your device, you don't need to fully shut it off. Um, if you don't want to get notifications, just open control center and enable do not disturb mode and your iPad shouldn't disturb you. And if you want to just close your device, then literally tap the power button and your iPad is designed to live like this for a long time in standby mode without you using it and keep a lot of battery life. Now, another thing you should do when you first get your device is open up settings, scroll down, and you're going to want to check on messages to make sure that iMessage is turned on. Feel free to send me a text. You have my texting email right there and tap on FaceTime and make sure FaceTime is turned on. If it's not, turn it on and sign in with your Apple account because those are two very vital functions on your iPad. Now let's discuss how to use your iPad to send emails. So here you have the mail app on your iPad. If you don't see it, you can just swipe down and you'll see this thing called Spotlight Search. And right here you can type something in like mail to find the application, or it does a lot of other cool things such as, you know, unit conversions, three meters to feet, and it will show you the conversion. It does math calculations, stuff like that. But for now, we're looking for mail. We can open it up. And here you have the mail app. As you can see, I have no mail. That's unfortunate. I guess I'm not very popular and I have no message selected. But if you have messages, then you can actually just access them by tapping on them, which they'll appear right on the left column of your screen. And then the message will appear on the right side of your screen. Use the subject line right here in bold, and you have your message right here. You have your sender up there and who it was sent to and at what time right there. So what you can do, tap this little reply button to reply, reply all, forward, or trash. You can also move this email to the junk folder, which, boom, it's gone. 
And another cool thing you can do is if you want to write a new email, tap on this little button in the top right corner of your screen, and it will say new message. So it will say to, so I'm just gonna write a message to Apple. You can add your subject, hello. And you can add your message right here, which one cool thing you can do is you can actually tap on this little button right here. It's a dictation button. And the first time you tap it, it will ask you to enable dictation. And you can, once you do that, just tell it what you want to type. So, hi there, I just got a new iPad, period. It's great, exclamation point. Then tap this keyboard button and then click the keyword. Here's your message to Apple. Subject line is hello. Nobody's CC'd and here's the message. And I can easily send it by tapping this send button. And it's gonna tell me invalid address because Apple is not an actual email. But if I just type in an actual email address, then I send it, it will send it. But now you're probably wondering, how do you see the emails that you already sent out? So to do that, tap on whatever it says right here on the top corner of your screen, it may say iCloud, Gmail, Yahoo, whatever your email provider is, tap on that. Then you should see in the mailboxes section, sent, which right here you can see all of the emails you've sent. If you tap on mailboxes again, you can access your junk, see which emails you threw away. And you can always tap back to your inbox to see your new emails in your inbox. And to reload your inbox to look for new emails, simply tap right here and drag down. And you should see this little loading indicator. Now, as you can see, it's updated it just now, or it might be downloading new messages. And that's how you get all your latest new emails, but it should do that automatically. Now, if you want to add a new email, to the mail app because of course it will have your iCloud email if you signed up for one. But if you want to add a new one, open up the settings app. Now you want to tap on mail, tap on accounts, tap on add account, tap on whatever your account type is. Then you'll essentially just want to sign in with that email account and it will add it to the mail app. Now if you can't see it, just open the mail app, tap on mailboxes and you should see at the top all inboxes or whatever the new inbox that you added is, whether it be Gmail or Yahoo, I'll say Gmail or Yahoo, and you can tap on that to see your emails in that inbox. Now let's discuss texting. So with texting, you have iMessage right here, which is for texting. And as you can see, when you first open it up, I'll say no conversation selected. In the left column, you have your messages. In the right column, it will show what the message is. So I'll just tap one. Here's a bunch of junk emails I sent myself just to test this out. And you might get a prompt to send read receipts. This essentially allows others to see that you've read their messages. You can allow or not allow it. So here is my message right here. As you can see right here, I have several options. So I have this little message field where I can type something in. And once I type that in, I can click this little button to send it. I also have this little camera button, which I can tap on to take a photograph. And then once I've taken that photograph, I'll click this little blue button and it will send that photograph. If I have a photograph I've already taken, I'll tap on this little photos icon right here. And I can just tap on it and send it again. Now, if you can't see any of these icons right here, then essentially just tap on this little icon right here that looks like a stylized A and it will show them. Another thing you can do is you can tap on this little search bar to search for different moving pictures. These are called GIFs, but just tap in the search bar and you can send things like a happy birthday GIF. Another thing you can do is if you don't wanna send a actual text message reply, then you can just hold down on the message that they sent and use a quick reply function, which means you can add a heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, haha, -ha, 
exclamation or question mark, which I think is appropriate because let's be honest, what do these, uh, you know, random letters mean? Now, if you want to add a new message to send a new message to somebody, tap on this little button right here, type who you want to send it to, and then type in whatever the message is, and you can click send right there. And to clarify, when I say type who you want to send it to, don't type their name, type their phone number, their email, or you can type their name if you've added them to your contacts, which we'll discuss in a minute. You also have this search bar on messages, which you can use to search for a specific message. For example, tutorial. How's your tutorial going? And it's highlighting it right here for me. That's all you need to know about texting on your iPad. Now let's discuss FaceTime. So FaceTime is a cool video chat app on your iPad. When you open it up, you see your face and you'll see FaceTime and you'll see this little FaceTime button and this plus button. So if you want to start a FaceTime call with somebody, tap the plus button and then you'll type in their name or phone number. And keep in mind, they must have an Apple device for this to work. Now you can either use a FaceTime audio call, which is like a phone call or a FaceTime video call. So I'm going to do a video call. And as you can see, it's calling me right here. And here you can see me calling myself on multiple angles. So yeah, that's how FaceTime works. If you want to end the FaceTime call, you can tap this end button. You can tap this flip button to flip your camera to see from the front or the back camera. This is you in that little square. And then this is what the other person looks like. If you want to take a picture of them, tap this little white button right there. It'll say you took a FaceTime photo. If you want to mute your microphone, tap on this mute button right here. And you also have this effects page to modify how you look. You can learn this by messing with this on your own time because it's kind of complicated and I don't think it's important to go through. And to end the call, of course, you just tap this end button. But if you swipe up, you can actually add somebody to your call or turn your camera off or back on. And that's all you need to know. So I'm going to end this call. Now let's discuss contacts on your iPad. So contacts, it's one of the apps I stuck in the junk folder because you probably won't use it too often. So when you open up the contacts app, of course you have your card right here, which you can tap on to view all your contacts information, or you can tap this plus button to make a new contact. And it's pretty much self-explanatory. You type in everything about that person, the first name, their last name, phone number, email, and all these fields are optional. Literally, I can just type in my first name, tap on done, and I created a contact, but that's kind of useless. So now to edit this contact I made, I'll tap on edit, and I'll add a phone number, which I'm just gonna type in a fake phone number because you guys don't need to see my phone number. And then I'll tap on done. And now I can text message make a phone call, do all kinds of stuff from this contact. If I want to actually text my contact, I'll open up my messages, tap a right message, and I'll type in Thomas, and it's going to let me text myself. But of course, it's not going to let me because the number does not exist. Now let's discuss how to use your camera. So your camera is right here, and I showed you how to access it from the lock screen. And of course, the first thing Apple wants to do when I open up the camera is to track me, but I'm not going to allow that. So I can click on don't allow, allow while using the app or allow once. And as you can see right here on this little tracker right here, it says precise on, but if I tap on that, then it won't actually show Apple where I live. It will just show them, okay, I'm living somewhere in San Mateo which of course it doesn't matter if they know what city I'm in because you know, there's like 500,000 people living in the city, I think. But once you do that, I'm just gonna allow that because that's gonna actually allow my photos app to recognize where I took a photo. So in the camera app, you have a couple cool options. 
So you can scroll in with two fingers to zoom in and out or use the slider on your screen. Tap to focus. And you'll see this little sun icon. You can just drag it up to increase your exposure. Hold down to lock your focus so your iPad won't refocus randomly. And then on the right side of your screen, you have this little slider for what type of photo you wanna take. Square photo, regular photo, video, slow motion video, time lapse. Here you have the square for the photos you've already taken. Here you have this little button, which will either be red or it will be white. And once you tap on that, it will actually take the photo. Or in the case of a video, it will start giving you this timestamp for how long the video has been taking and it will show a stop button, which you can press it to stop recording. You also have this little button right here to switch between using the front camera and the back camera. And on photos, you have this little button to have a little timer before you take your photo. So if I tap on three seconds, I'm gonna tap this and in three seconds, it will take the shot. You can also take a HDR photo, which allows for better lighting in certain situations or a live photo, which allows your photos to move a little bit when you tap on them. It's kind of fun. Anyways, once we tap on the little square button, we can scroll between all the photos we've taken. We can tap this little share button to send them to people. Tap this heart button to love the photo, to add it to our favorites album. Tap this delete button to delete our photo. Tap this edit button to get all these different functions for editing our photo. One thing I just like to do is tap on this little magic wand auto button and tap on done. But there's a lot of options right in there you can mess with to edit your photo if you want to get fancy. You can tap on all photos and it's going to give me this little pop up because I haven't opened the photos app yet. But as you can see, I have all my photos right here. One cool thing Apple will actually do is it will use AI to scan your photos and recognize who is in the photo from your contacts. It will tell you where the photos were taken. So since I haven't given it precise location access, it can't tell me exactly where the photos were taken, but it will tell me kind of in general. And there's a bunch of cool other options in the Photos app that you can mess with to organize your photos. You can also do this cool thing with the search tab to search for photos based on people, where the photo is taken, and you can even search for things like a dog breed. It's really cool. Now let's discuss the App Store. So as you can see, there's a bunch of programs on my iPad, but it's not that useful until I download more programs from the App Store. So when I open it up, I'll get this pop up. I'll just click continue and I can allow my location if I want to. And so in the App Store, the first thing you'll see is the Today tab, which is basically Apple's little recommended apps. So you can tap on them to expand them or tap out of them really easily. You have a tab with the most popular games right here, the most popular apps right here. You have this paid Apple Arcade subscription, which I don't use, but if you're into gaming, it's like a subscription gaming service. And you have this search bar, which right here, you can search for an app that's important that you need. So I know one app I'm gonna get addicted to is a YouTube. So I'll type that in and search for it. Here I have the option for YouTube and I can tap on it. So you can see, I see some information about the YouTube app right here, ratings and reviews. I have a little description of the YouTube app, which I can expand just by tapping on it. And I have this little get button right here, which I'll tap. So the first thing it's gonna do when I activate my iPad, since I've never downloaded an app before, is ask me to sign in to complete my purchase. So remember when we made that Apple ID when I set up my iPad? You're gonna need to type that in right now. So once you've typed that in, it will ask you to sign in. And then it might ask you for your payment information since you haven't used your Apple ID yet. So you'll just click on review right here. And the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is agree to some terms and conditions which 
you can just view them by tapping right here, this tiny text. And then you'll tap on next. And now it's gonna ask you for your payment information. I don't wanna give up my payment information, so I'll tap on none. And it now will ask for your billing address, which you have to type that in right here. And then once you've typed that in, just tap on the little next button and it should just allow you to now download your app. So as you can see, it says Apple ID completed. Click on continue. Now click on get again on your app. And keep in mind, it will tell you if it's paid when you download it. it will tell you a little price right here. But once you tap on that, just tap on install. And now we'll ask you for your Apple ID passcode. So earlier we did enter the passcode, but that was just to finish setting up our payment information. Now we're gonna type it in again to download the app. Once you've typed in your passcode, tap on sign in and it should say done. And then your app will download right here on your home screen and you can use it. Might take a couple seconds. As you can see, it's coming in right there. Now, another important thing you might wanna to learn to do on your iPad is check the weather. Now your iPad doesn't actually have a built-in weather application. So to check the weather, open up the Safari application and now you're going to want to head to your favorite website, like weather.com, which you can just type it in, in the URL bar right there and tap on go. So here we can see our forecast right here, hourly forecast for my city. And now what I recommend you doing is actually tapping this share button right here and you'll tap on add to home screen and you'll tap on add. So now, as you can see, I have the Weather Channel app right here. And if I want to access the weather, I can just tap on that app right there and it will open up the weather application for me where I can see the weather in my city and I can navigate you know, the weather application right here really easily. Now, let's discuss how to use a calculator on your iPad. So a lot of calculators on your iPad charge money for doing basic calculations. We don't want that, so I found one that appears to be completely free. At least I have not found a charge yet. So I'll link that in the description below. So you can just download this on your iPad. And then once you open it up, it's just a normal calculator. You know, you can type in 15 times 10 equals 150. You have a backspace function, x squared, x to the third, cosine, tangent, log, all of the basic calculator functions you'd expect on a scientific calculator. So that's basically, you know, a calculator. You guys all probably know how to use a basic calculator. That's how this functions, but it's on your iPad. Now let's discuss how to browse the web. So we'll be using Safari for this, which is this little compass icon on your home screen. You can tap on it. And what you've probably be greeted with when you first open it up is a page that looks something like this. So you'll see search or enter a website name. So right there, you can type something in and it will act basically like Google. It gives you, you know, search results, or if you search for it, it will just give you Google search results right in there. And you can type whatever you want in here. Of course, you guys all probably know how to use basic Google search. You know, you tap on things to open them, but some cool tricks that you can do is if you want to open something in a new tab, tap with two fingers and it will open a new tab for you. And all your new tabs are right here at the top of your screen. So if you want to close one of them, just tap on the tab and tap the little X button and it will close it. To open up a new blank tab, just tap on this plus button right here. And you can also tap on this little two squares button to manage all your tabs right in here and to open new tabs or new incognito slash private browsing tabs right in here. Tap this little book button to view your bookmarks, favorites, search history, etc. And you can of course clear your history by tapping this clear button and clearing all your history. If you navigate to a page that you really like and would like to bookmark it, tap on this little share button and tap on add bookmark and you can save a bookmark now. And now when you tap on this plus button and you go to your bookmarks right here, I'll tap on favorites. And as you can see, there is my bookmark that I just made, Apple. 
If you want to check the news on your iPad, I recommend you check out the news app, which to access it, you just tap on this little N news icon right here. The first time you open it, it will tell you welcome to Apple News and it will do a little loading thing. And now it's going to take a couple seconds to set up your new Apple News profile. You can tap on continue and here's my news app. So I can give it access to my location if I want to get local news. And now I'll have the Apple News Plus subscription option for if you want to have the paid version of Apple News, which you can just close out of to access it for free. And here's the Apple News app. So first I have, you know, top stories. These are the headlines in Apple News, the most popular Apple News stories are right here that Apple has picked for me. And I can, of course, tap on one of these stories and I can view the story. But if the story text is a little too small for me, I can tap on this little AA button and I can change the text size very easily. I can tap this bookmark button to save my story, which I can now access it on the side from save stories right here. I can tap on this share button to send this story to somebody via text, mail, save it to my notes or something like that. And to get out of this story, I can tap this back button. So you can pretty much scroll infinitely in here and read a lot of these stories, which a lot of them are free to read. But if you have a certain news outlet that you especially like, then tap on it, channels, topics, and stories, and you can add your news outlet, for example, Reuters, and you can tap on the little plus button right here. And now you'll get a lot more news from Reuters, and you can also access articles by Reuters right in the side under your channels section. So here is their page and all of their articles are right here. And to do to get back to the home page of news, tap on the today page. And if you want to view your news history to see which articles you read in the past, tap on history and you'll have a list right here, which you can always clear out to clear your news history so that your articles that you read aren't saved in there. Let's discuss the basics of the calendar app, which is right here. So on the icon, you'll see the current date. It's Monday, the 29th of March. You can open it up and you'll get this what's new page when you first open it. Just tap continue. You shouldn't see that again. And it will ask for your location. And so I'm going to allow it because it can actually give you notifications based on your location. Anyways, so here is a calendar. You can slide between the dates. You can change if you're viewing a day, week, month, or year. And here's all the different months. You can just tap on them to view, you know, the different areas and the different days of that month. And you can actually see your holidays right here. So it just has all of the basic holidays, Passover, Palm Sunday, Holly, and then you have all of these different dates right here. And if you want to actually add an event to that date in your calendar, hold down and you'll add a new event title, location, whether it's all day, when's it start, when does it end. So I'm just going to add a sample event called event. I'll add it right here. And now if I want to view details on this event, I'll just tap on it and it will give me details on this event in my calendar. So I can just use that to keep track of all of my events, appointments, etc. in a digital calendar. Now let's discuss the Maps app. So the Maps app, you can open it up. And of course, you'll get the what's new tab, but just click continue, it'll close out. And maps will ask for your location. I personally use the precise location while I'm using the app because that allows maps to better see where I am to give me better routing directions. So in the maps tab, you can just scroll in and out to you know view different areas in basically anywhere in the world. You can tap this little I button to change what type of map you're viewing. And if you want to find a place, then just type in in the search bar, it says search for place or address. So I'm just going to look for Apple, Apple store in Cupertino. And I can actually get directions right here. As you can see, it's a 28 minute drive from me. Tap directions. 
and it's going to tell me getting there safely, always observe posted signs and laws. I'll tap OK. And here it will give me some routing options. Of course, I can avoid tolls or highways, and I can get biking, walking directions, transit directions. And then on the normal driving directions, it will give you a preview of your route. So you have the fastest route in dark blue, then a slightly slower route in light blue. But once you're ready to go, just tap on go. And here it will give you turn by turn directions to wherever you're trying to go. So in this case, I'm trying to go to Apple Park. And then once you're done with your route, you can just tap on the end button to end your directions. Let's discuss the reminders app. So the reminders app will give you little reminders for things that you might forget. So to create reminders, open up the reminders app and you'll see no reminders today, scheduled, all flagged and your different lists of different reminders. So to create a new reminder, tap new reminder and you can type in, for example, coffee tomorrow at 7 a.m. And so as you can see right here, coffee tomorrow at 7 a.m. And it's giving me a suggested time right here. Would you like to be reminded tomorrow at 7 in the morning? I'll tap that. And now I'm going to get the reminder tomorrow at 7 a.m. I have coffee. Now, if I actually go to the reminders list, I can see what reminders I have for today, what reminders I've scheduled for later today, what reminders I've flagged, all reminders. And I can actually search for the reminder just by typing in whatever the reminder is. So I just created one by mistake called I. So here's the reminder. And when I want to mark it as complete, I can just tap on this little button right here and it will mark my reminder as complete. You can also use Siri to give you a reminder. For example, Siri, remind me test in one minute. Okay, added. But anyways, so once you've set a reminder, if you just check in the reminders app, it will tell you what reminders you have. Now let's discuss the stocks app. So if you open up the stocks app, it will tell you welcome to stocks. And you just tap on continue. And here you'll see the stocks app. So on the right hand of the screen, we have top stories. So essentially these are business related news stories that relate to certain stocks. And then in the left hand side of the screen, we have all of our different stocks. So there are a few stocks that are in here by default. For example, we can see the Boeing stock right here. When you tap on a stock, it will tell you the stock name, the stock ticker, what the stock price was at close and after hours, if it's after hours, otherwise it will tell you the current stock price. You can also see the stock price right here and the daily change, which right here it's in dollars, but you can tap that to see the daily change in percent or the total market value of that stock. You can use two fingers right here to see how a stock changed over a certain period of time. And you can, of course, change the time period by tapping right in there. You can get lots of information about the stock right in here. For example, open, high, low, volume, PE, market cap, etc. And you can get lots of more data about the stock from Yahoo Finance just by tapping more data from Yahoo Finance. Tap on the search button and you can actually search for a stock by the ticker. For example, if I want to search for Tesla, I'll type in the ticker, or you can also type in the name of the stock. So here you can see Tesla right here, and you can see its current price at close and after hours and all information on Tesla. And if your stock isn't in your watch list, which is this little list on your homepage of stocks, you can tap on add to watch list. And now, as you can see, Tesla has been added there for easy access. Now, how do you edit all of these stocks right here? Because, you know, let's be honest, some of you may not care about the default stocks that are in there. It's really easy. Tap on this edit button. Then you can tap on the minus button to delete a stock from your watch list. You can use these little grabbers to move around at the order of the stocks in your watch list. Or you can tap this little plus button and you can add a stock to your watch list by searching for it and tapping add to watch list. Then once you're done editing, tap done. 
and boom, I rearranged my watch list. I deleted some stocks. I added a stock. That's basically how the stock app works. Now let's discuss the clock app. So the clock app right here is essentially a pretty cool app that's kind of like a digital watch, but on your iPad. So when you first open it up, you have the world clock tab. So you can see what time it is in lots of different cities around the world. And if the city that you want to see isn't in there, for example, let's say I want to see the time in uh, Accra, Ghana. You can tap on that. Or if you want to search for a city, then I'll just search for a city right in here. Auckland, New Zealand, if I can spell that correctly. And you can tap on that. And now I can see the time in Auckland right here. And it's also showing me right there. I also have this alarm tab to set a new alarm. So I can just tap on this plus button. I can type in what time I want to be woken up at. For example, 4.45 in the morning. And if I just tap out of that, I can change my alarm sound, can enable snooze or disable snooze if I don't want to have that option. And I can tap save. And now I will be woken up at whatever time this alarm is set for. Now, once you have an alarm, if you want to set it quite often, then you can just tap on this little switch button to set the alarm after you've already used it. It will just re-enable it. You also have the stopwatch tab right here, which of course is a basic stopwatch. You have your start button, your lap button, your stop button, and your reset button. And it will tell you, you know, all kinds of information, the lap number, the split, and the total time right in there. And here is the total time on the stopwatch. You can of course stop it and restart it just like a normal stopwatch. I also have this timer function right here which allows me to set a timer for up to 24 hours, just under 24 hours. So I can set a timer with a different ending noise when the timer is up. I can tap start and now it will set a timer for me. So in 23 hours and 55 minutes and 50 seconds, my iPad will make a noise. Now, if I want to pause the timer, I can pause it resume it, or I can just tap done to cancel the timer right there. Now let's discuss the notes app. So the notes app is basically a notepad. So you open it up on the left, you have all your notes that you've made so far. On the right side, you have whatever note you've currently selected to make a new note, tap on this little new note button. And now you can type in, you know, the headline of the note. And then you can tap on return a few times and type in whatever the text is that you want in the note to be. And one cool thing you can do in the notes app is you can do lots of things like you can add a checklist by tapping this check button, you type stuff in. Then when you want to check them, you literally just check them. And you can also add a photo. You can literally just draw on here. And you can do lots of cool stuff in the notes app. There's lots of ways you can format your notes differently. So just mess around with all the different functions in the notes app and you'll be able to write cool notes with drawings and you know, whatever you need in there. Now, one cool thing you can do in the notes app is you can actually lock notes so you can only view them after entering your passcode or fingerprint. So to lock a note, tap these three dots, tap on lock, and now we'll ask you for a passcode to lock your note. So I'll type in one, two, three, four as the passcode. And I'll tap on done. I'll tap on the padlock and my note is now locked. If I want to view it, I have to enter the note passcode or my fingerprint. If I want to delete a note, I'll just slide left and tap on this delete button. You can also use your iPad as a document scanner. So to do that, tap on the files app tap on these three dots and tap on scan documents. Now you can just scan a document into your phone and it will actually automatically crop the edges of that document and it will form a PDF. You can do, of course, multi-page scans and it will save it as a PDF. I'll automatically take the photos and you can just tap on them. You can make it, for example, grayscale, black and white or a normal photograph. And once you're done with it, Tap on save and it will ask you where you want to save it. I'll tap on my iPad 
and I'll tap save. Now, if I want to look for that scan, I'll tap on on my iPad. And here's my scanned PDF document, which I can easily email to somebody or text it to somebody or print it or whatever right from there. The next important thing we need to discuss about your iPad is Siri. So Siri on your iPad. To access Siri, hold down on the home button or on certain iPad models, hold down on the power button. So if you're holding down on the button, Siri should pop up right here. As you can see, Siri is in the bottom right corner there. And Siri can do lots of things. For example, Siri, tell me what time it is in Beijing. In Beijing, China mainland, it's 2.26 p.m. Siri, how much is $2,500 in euros? The answer is 2,125 euros. And she does lots of cool stuff like that. She can also set reminders, set alarms, all kinds of stuff. She is really useful. She does a lot of things. But she also is kind of dumb, so um, don't ask her anything too complex, otherwise she'll probably just Google it. Now let's discuss how to make a recording of audio on your iPad. So to do that, you're going to be using the Voice Memos app. So tap on it. Of course, it's going to give you the welcome tab that you always get when you first open an application. And as you can see right here, I have my two tabs, all recordings, and I have this page right here. So I can tap on this red button to start a new recording, which is just gonna record right here. And it will name the recording, whatever your street is that you're currently on. You can easily pause and resume the recording. When you want to, you can tap on the done button and you can delete the recording. And that's essentially how you make recordings on your iPad. Now, if you ever lose your iPad, one thing you should do before worrying about it and you know buying a new one immediately is open up whatever your internet browser is. You can do this on a device that isn't your iPad, such as you know your computer, your friend's iPhone, something like that. And in the search bar, search for iCloud.com slash find and tap on go. Now we'll ask you to sign in with your Apple ID right here. And it will actually try and help you to locate your iPad. So if you ever lose your iPad, remember iCloud.com slash find. So that's all the tips I have for your iPad for today. Apple does have some cool iPad resources available for you to check out to learn more about your iPad. So one of these resources is the tips app. So if you open it up, you have all these different options you can click on, such as essentials, and they'll tell you how to do different things on your iPad. For example, how to take a screenshot. Another good resource is Apple's iPad user guide, which is available in the Safari browser. You just search for iPad user guide on Apple's website, which you can literally go to apple.com, tap the search button, and you'll type in iPad user guide, and it will pop up for you right here, iPad user manual and it will tell you everything you need to know about your iPad. All right, you guys, I really do hope that this very long iPad tutorial was helpful for you. If you ever have anything you need to know about your iPad, let me know down in the comments section and I'll try to get back to you. Or you can always watch parts of this video over again to learn more about parts of your iPad that maybe you know, you're forgetting about how to use, stuff like that. If you enjoyed this video, I really do appreciate it. If you leave a like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy your iPad. Have a great day. Bye.